Welcome to Toronto. It's rainy outside, but we've got the roof. It's closed. Marcus Stroman will take the mound to make his 32nd start of the season. Marcus is 9-9, nine and nine, and the Blue Jays will try to win this series. They have split the first two games with Baltimore. Blue Jays won in the opener on Tuesday night 5-1. They lost a heartbreaker last night 3-2 with a couple of late home runs by the Orioles, but that's what they do. They lead the majors with home runs. Starting lineup for Buck Showalter's Orioles, Adam Jones against the starter Marcus Stroman, 6 for 11 for his career. His OPS is over 1.1. And then Mark Trumbo, he homered in last night's game in the eighth inning over his last five games, hitting the ball very hard. Two doubles, three home runs, and he has four RBIs. Trumbo is a hot hitter, leading the majors with 46 home runs. Got to be careful with all of those hitters, but they can hurt you with the long ball. Marcus Stroman, start number 32. He is also trying to crack the 200 inning berries. Sits at 197 starting this game. Lefty's hitting 264, righties 261. Very even. He's given up 11 home runs to lefties. Righties have hit 10 home runs off of Marcus. He's had his problems, though, with the Orioles this season. He's faced them three times. He's thrown 16 innings. He's given up 14 earned runs against the Orioles. He's going to have to keep the ball down, and I think he's going to have to place that fastball the way he did against the Yankees in his last start. Marcus trying to become the eighth pitcher in the American League to reach the 200 inning plateau this season. He of course will be doing it for the first time in his young career. Adam Jones the leadoff man he had three hits in the game last night he finished up three for five. Jones is stepping in the box Stroman. Getting set on the mound. Here is the first pitch of the game it's tapped up the middle. Devin Travis near second nice play by Travis. He's going to get a big out of boy from Marcus Stroman as well. Travis missed two games because of a left shoulder injury, but he makes a nice play to start this ball game tonight in support of Marcus Stroman. Adam Jones is a free swinger, so he's going to be up there swinging at the first pitch he sees from Stroman right back through the middle. It kicks off the mound, and there's Devin to finish it off. And Everybody's fired up. Marcus is fired up. Devin Travis is fired up. We got that quick shot of Russell Martin fired up. Everybody's <laughs> fired up tonight. This is the final home game of the regular season for the Blue Jays, and this is the villain from last night's game, Young Soo Kim, who had a pinch hit home run in the ninth inning. Kim has been the best pinch hitter for the Orioles. That home run, his sixth pinch hit of the season in just nine at bats. One and two to Kim. It what an at bat that was last night. He battled and battled. Finally got a ball in the inner half and he was able to turn on it. Marcus has been very careful with him by staying away from him. Pitch him away, play him away. He hits that one to left field. That breaking ball, he put an inside out swing on it and gets the one out single. Well, let's take a look at the defense behind Marcus Stroman. The Blue Jays have been charged with 86 airs this season. That's middle of the pack in the American League. Carrera Pilar and Michael Saunders from left to right. In the outfield, on the infield, Donaldson, Tulowitzki, Travis, and Encarnacion. This is the regular lineup of late. Russell Martin doing the catching for Marcus Stroman. Yeah, we've already seen Devin Travis at second base. He last started, was that was Sunday. Remember, he only played five innings in that ball game. And then was out first time back out there. This is Manny Machado. Machado having another terrific season, just a tick under 300 at 298. Two balls and no strikes to Machado. Manny in this series is 0 for 8 so far. It's this ball to right. Saunders has it measured. He is there to away. Uh, Mark Trumbo leads the majors in home runs. 46 on the season, and his 46 came in the eighth. First one against the Blue Jays this year. Looked like they tried to go down and away against Trumbo. He's just too strong. Knocks that one into the second deck, number 46, RBI, number 106. 
He had homered against all but three teams in the majors. The Blue Jays, of course, he played the most games. He also not homered against Detroit or Colorado. Much fewer games against those two teams. Right back up the middle. That's a base hit for Trumbo. Well, it's interesting. The Orioles, they are a very veteran lineup. But they looked back at the video of Stroman's start against the Yankees and saw that he was throwing a lot of fastballs, and they're up here hacking tonight. They don't want him to get ahead, so there's another first pitch fastball. It's right there. I think the Orioles also know that the Blue Jays' bullpen has been depleted, and Marcus Stroman has to go a long way tonight. Marcus is going to try and have some quick innings. So they see a first pitch fastball, knowing that he wants to get ahead with that fastball, and they're ready to jump on it. Matt Weeders, the switch hitting catcher. Weeders last night one for four had a single in the seventh. That's a two seam fastball for a strike. Two outs were in the top of the first inning. Kim at second with a single, and out later, Mark Trumbull singled to center. Broken bat. Looper Travis is going to get there. He makes the catch. The inning is over. Strowman gives up a couple of singles, but strands a pair of base runners. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Bobby Jimenez will take the mound for the Orioles when we come back. Offense is in the American League, but September has been a rough stretch for both of these lineups. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays lineup. They managed just two runs on six hits in last night's game. Ezekiel Carrera still in the top spot in the order, right behind him, Josh Donaldson over his last eight games. He's 10 for 28 with six extra base hits. And then down in the seventh spot in the order, Michael Saunders has hit well against the Orioles all season long, but he's really hit well against Ubaldo Jimenez, the starter. 9 for 19 of 474 average with four long balls for Saunders. They'll face Ubaldo Jimenez, who's been the mystery man for him this year. The first half of the season, he was awful, but the second half, he's been lights out for Jimenez. Forget about those numbers right there. Everything has been elevated since the All Star break. He's been outstanding. He's got a high ERA against the Blue Jays this year. He's 0 and 1, but he's had 14 strikeouts in three starts against the Jays. The man has lasted just one third of an inning starting here at Rogers Center on the 12th of June. He was charged with five earned runs on six hits. Shortest outing of his career. He also sprinkled in an inning in a third game in July, a four to third inning where he gave up six earned runs, but he has turned it on since then. He didn't get that call, and you can see him shaking his head. Going to have to make an adjustment to coax Angel Hernandez into calling those strikes. Carrera fouls it back. It's a full count. Josh Donaldson waiting on deck, and he's been hot, as we mentioned, over his last 10 games. For his last eight games, he's at 357. Yeah. 
gets it to left. That's going to drop in front of Kim. Red hot bat, top of the order. Carrera with another hit. Take a look at the defense for the Orioles. They're always one of the premier defensive teams in all of baseball. In the outfit, it's Kim Jones and Michael Bourne getting them start in right. Manny Machado, J.J. Hardy, they're both gold glovers. John Scope will win a gold glove one of these days. Chris Davis at first and Matt Withers. He's a two-time gold glover behind the plate. we got to show the hero from last night. That's Young Soo Kim. They've had nine different left fielders this season for the Orioles. He's played the most games out there. This is his 88th game in left field. He hasn't committed an error in 638 innings out there. The man is chasing back Carrera at first. Neither one of these teams are much of a threat to run. They both rely on power. Donaldson goes after the first pitch. The menace moved back into the rotation when Chris Tillman had his shoulder problems. And the menace has pitched very well in September, including a complete game two hitter on the 5th of September at Tampa Bay. Followed that up with a couple of wins. Or, well, one win against Detroit, another no decision against Tampa. Then last time out against Boston, he lost, but he didn't give up an earned run. First time all season that he had a start where he didn't give up an earned run, but he lost that one when he gave up a couple of unearned runs. Now it's 5 2 1 against the Red Sox. Boston went into Baltimore and swept the four game series. 0 2 outside. It's 1 and 2 now to Donaldson. Well, you don't have to be a real in depth baseball fan to figure out this is a big game. Baltimore is a game behind the Blue Jays in the wild card race. Blue Jays have the top wild card spot, or is our second a game back. In case you're just joining us, the Cleveland Detroit game at Comerica has been postponed and they will play it on Monday after the regular season ends on Sunday if it has an impact in the standings for Detroit or for Cleveland. Detroit right there. With Baltimore and really the Blue Jays for one of the wild card spots. 2 2 pitch to Donaldson, another throw to first. And it looked like Carrera was flinching, like he might want to take off. Jimenez, he's got a lot of moving parts to his windup and his delivery. So it takes him a while to release that baseball. There goes Carrera. Donaldson takes it low for ball four. Excuse me, ball three. Carrera picks up the stolen base, his seventh steal. He's only been caught three times. He had a stolen base for a moment last night where he slid in but then fell off the base, and then Donaldson doubled on the next pitch. This time, he gets it looks like underneath the pitch Jimenez was asking about where the pitch was. Let's see if he can get under the tag. Yeah he's there and it doesn't look like he ever came off of the bag. Three and two to Donaldson now. He takes ball four. So Donaldson with yet another walk. 108 walks this season for Donaldson. He is second in the American League to Mike Trout in that category. Well, the Blue Jays have been getting on base. They just haven't been able to come up with big hits. They've also been getting leads early in the ball game and then losing them late. So you'd love to see big numbers put up early. Really set the tone for the night in the first inning. Edwin and Carnacion, nobody out. First two men reach base. Great numbers across the board for Encarnacion. 536 slugging percentage, 42 home runs. High deep drive to right. Michael Bourne over. Carrera going back to tag at second. The out is made in right. Carrera advances to third on the long fly ball. At bats where you move runners, if you're not going to hit it out or get a base hit at least advance that runner 90 feet. Edwin does that. 
And now he gives Bautista a chance for an easy RBI. Get the ball in the air, get it in the outfield. You've got a, an RBI and a quick lead. Last night, the Blue Jays scored a run in the first and a run in the second, and both of those runs scored on sacrifice flies. We'd like to see him hit a couple of doubles or a home run and get going, <laughs> get these bats rolling. Bautista's had his problems with the menace, just three for 35. That can all be forgotten with a big hit here in the first. There are just some pitcher that you just don't pick the ball up or it seems like they always. Make great pitches on you. This is one of them for Jose. Doesn't have a home run against him either in his career. He falls behind 0 and 2. Bautista chases one upstairs and strikes out two outs. Three fastballs. I mean, he went right after him. He knows the numbers too. Jose looking to drive in his first run against Jimenez in his career. Two fastballs down, and now he's going to elevate. He comes up empty. Good sequence there for Jimenez. Russell Martin. He's got a 267 career average against Jimenez. First and third, two outs. <laughs> Everybody is trying to get into the act. That's pretty cool. He kind of has that same type of beard as Russell Martin. He looks twinning. like he could be his twin, doesn't he? Separated at birth. It's down in the dirt. It's two balls and no strikes to Russell Martin. Another productive season with the bat for Martin. 20 home runs, 74 RBIs. Top of the strike zone, a menace doing a much better job of locating his pitches. He's made some mechanical adjustments at the suggestion of Ramon Martinez, one of their pitching coaches. Fastball right on the quarter, and Martin. Wow. He didn't like the delay call. He's talking it over with Angel Hernandez, a home plate umpire. You can see Russell said that ball's in off the plate. Make sure we get that when I'm behind the plate. Uh, like I said, he's got a lot of moving parts to that pitching windup and that release point. That's a good splitter that's down and in. It's a full count, so Donaldson, the base runner at first, with two outs, will be moving on the pitch. Bilowitzki is on deck. Herrera's at third. He'll stay put. Chopper up the middle. J.J. Hardy behind the bag at second. In time, Martin with the slide, but the inning is over. So both clubs get a couple of base runners on in the first. Each has stranded two scoreless after one.
this bullpen a little muddled right now. Brett Cecil has been a guy manager John Gibbons has called upon in tight spots, and he's really come through for him. Last night in the eighth inning, he struck out Chris Davis swinging on a 3-2 curveball. Cecil told me that one of the hardest things for a pitcher to do is command his secondary stuff. If he can't do that, hitters are all over his fastball. Cecil said his cutter sits at 89, fastball at 94. Not too much difference in mile per hour, so if he's not hitting with the curve, it's tough to get guys out. One of the biggest differences for him in the second half, he's going with what the catchers are calling for. He's not shaking them off. It's done wonders for him because it takes his mind off of setting guys up or who's at the plate. Now he's trusting Russ or DeHonor, and it's been really working for him. But Thank you, Hazel. We move to the second. There's no score in the game. Orioles left a pair on the bases and the Blue Jays did the same so nobody's been able to cash in yet. Marcus Stroman got Matt Wieters to get into a little pop up to end the first. So it'll be Chris Davis Jonathan Scope and Michael Bourne for the Orioles here in the second inning. Buck Showalter boy he reads the scouting reports he moves his <laughs> players around according to the matchups. We Davis saw hit second in yeah. first two games. We saw Chris Davis hit second. And now he has dropped down into a, an RBI spot. And they've inserted last night's hero Kim into that number two spot and he's already got a base hit. Davis just two for ten against Stroman. And Showalter will look at those matchups and just try to stack his lineup according to what a hitter has done against that starting pitcher. See the defense playing. Three men on the right side of the infield. Marcus Stroman, this is his sixth start in the month of September. He is 0 4 with a no decision. But he's actually thrown the ball much better than that record might indicate. Little chopper, and Carnacion is going to shovel to Stroman, who's there waiting on the toss. Run away. This Marcus Stroman start is brought to you by BioSteel Sports Nutrition, the natural choice for everyday performance. Drink the pink. The last regular season home game for the Blue Jays here tonight. It's a rubber game of this three game series against the Orioles. Jonathan Scope, Ariel's second baseman. You were just talking about Marcus and how well he is throwing in September. I thought he got off to a great start this year. Looked like he was going to be a big winner, nine to nine coming into this game, but he got knocked around in the middle months of the season and he's made some adjustments. Big hop for Donaldson. Couple of ground balls here in the second. So I agree with you. I think he is throwing as well as he has ever thrown in his career. Everything is down. He's commanding everything. He's not throwing as many pitches as we saw earlier in the year. We're not curveball, cutter, slider, sinker, fastball. You know all of those pitches. He's combined some of those. He threw more curveballs in his last start, and he threw way more fastballs in his last start. We mentioned the. Five starts in September. The opponents will only hit 220 off of it in those five starts. This is Michael Bourne. Orioles picked him up late. He actually spent some time with the Blue Jays in the minor leagues down in Dunedin way back in April. There's a slider for a strike. He had a big stolen base in yesterday's ball game in the ninth inning but against Osuna. He singled and then stole second. Bourne was acquired from Arizona August 31st. Bowman with his first strikeout in the ninth. Good inning for Marcus. Three up, three down. He retires the side in order. Middle of the second, no score.
20 and 12 game packs will go on sale October 4th at 10 a.m. The packs include enrollment in my Blue Jays. Visit bluejays.com slash game packs for more details. But Thank you, Hazel. No score, bottom of the second inning, and it'll be Tulowitzki, Saunders, and Pilar for the Blue Jays against Ubaldo Lemens. Tulowitzki batting 277 in the month of September with a couple of homes. Tulowitzki and Jimenez, of course, were teammates with the Rockies. So Jimenez doesn't have too many secrets from Tulowitzki. He watched him pitch from the shortstop position. And Tulo knows all about him. He's going to get his share of breaking balls. He should take that breaking ball and shoot it to right field. He's got all kind of room over there. They've got three infielders on the left side, and the Orioles shift a lot, and they're they're not sold on one shift. We might see this defensive alignment one time against Tulowitzki. He might hit a ball to right field. We might see Scope then shift over to the other side of the infield. I mean, they they go with what they see in the game. And they might change. Now the running fastball catches the outside corner, evens it count at two and two. Well, Troy Tulowitzki, he spreads the ball around, but the majority of his hits are going to go to center and left. But when he's in tough against a tough pitcher, he'll shoot that ball down into the right field corner as he's done in this series. Well, they saw him trying to go that way on this home stand. Well, let's get a pair of doubles on Tuesday, both into the right field corner. Wayne Kirby is in charge of the outfit. He's the first base coach and the outfield coach as well. He moves the outfielders around according to what he sees. Full count. High pop up over near the Blue Jays dugout. Machado is there and makes the catch the third baseman with the catch. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale only at home building center and home hardware building center. It is raining in Toronto and the roof is closed here and from what we understand the forecast for the three game series in Boston is not encouraging. Sounds like it's going to be raining all three days. That's your umbrella. You pack your umbrella and rain. Right Raincoat. Michael Saunders takes first pitch strike. Michael has hit seven home runs against the Orioles this season. That's the most he's ever hit against one club in a season. Of course, that includes a three homer game at Oriole Park in Camden Yards back in June. He gets jammed on this one, but that's going to be into the seats. Teams will go upstairs against Michael Saunders with two strikes. Will also try and get a breaking ball down low to get him to sweep over the top of it. He's had a good year against Baltimore. Got a high cutter there. The Blue Jays are eight and five in their last 13 games. They really got off to a rough start in September. For the season against the Orioles, they're 10 and 8. They will win the season series again. They've had some really tough losses this week. And this is when you really have to stick together as a team. Tough games against some tough teams. You know. Some tough losses and some big wins too. They had that comeback win against the Yankees. But this is where you really have to stay together and pick each other up and pull for each other and, and bind together 
as a team. You don't want to start fraying. Lays off that high fastball. It's three and two to Saunders. Kevin Pillar waits on deck. All you got to do as a player is think about what you can do to help the team win. Get on base. Start a rally. Inside. Call the strike. Ball looked like it was off the plate. Ran back over the corner. And Saunders is called out on strikes. Some of the best games that Yamano Jimenez has had against the Blue Jays in his career is when he's hitting that inside corner to lefties and the outside corner versus the righties. He's going to bring that fastball back. Saunders thinks it's a ball. Matt Wieters holds it there for the home plate umpire. And Jimenez has his second strikeout of the ninth. Kevin Pillar batting with two outs. There's a lot of movement on that fastball. It's 91, but there's a lots of tailing action on it. Well, there's a lot you have to digest if you're a hitter against Jimenez. Fastball, splitter, curveball, slider, changeup. I mean, just a little bit of everything. So you might want to start looking either just look for the baseball or just look for it in a certain area. Ground ball foul. Menace was an all star while pitching for the Rockies in 2010. That was his best season. He really came out through the ball well all season long. Went 19 and 8 and had a 288 earned run average pitching in Colorado. That's impressive. <laughs> That's impressive. I know he had a no hitter in his career. That might have been that year when he was with the Rockies. Dealing. Pilar covers that outside pitch. Looked like a cutter on the outside. When a menace won those 19 games in 2010, he had a 319 earned run average at Coors Field in 15 starts. He went nine and two at Coors Field. Guess his curveball wasn't a factor there, was it? He only gave up four home runs at home there in Colorado. In Colorado. That's impressive. Why don't you pitch to Pilar? Man has got away with one right there. He left one out over the plate for Kevin and he fouled it back. That no hitter that I was talking about was that year. It was in April of that season at Atlanta. Threw 128 pitches, faced 31 batters. He had six walks, seven strikeouts, but he picked up the first no hitter in Colorado history. Lark thought about it, but checked his swing in time. Breaking ball lifted in the air down the right field line. Michael Bourne makes the catch in foul ground. And Menace retires the Blue Jays in the bottom of the second. No score. Only three hits in the game so far.
WestJet. Daily nonstop flights and great vacation deals. Why not book your Vegas getaway today at WestJet.com slash Vegas or call your travel agent. Good turnout again tonight. This is the final home game of the regular season and fans want to be part of this. Of course, there's a lot at stake for both ball clubs, the Orioles and the Blue Jays, fighting to secure a wild card spot. J.J. Hardy batting ninth. Makes the first pitch strike. Well, what both of these teams are going to find out, even before play started tonight, whoever wins picks up a half a game on the Tigers because the Tigers got rained out today. Outside. It is the final game of the regular season and we want to acknowledge this great TV crew that helps us every single day put on these wonderful TV shows to bring you the Blue Jays baseball all summer long. And it takes quite a cast of folks to help us and they all do everything to make us look good. And we want to thank them and acknowledge what they do for this. Wonderful TV show. We get the benefits of it and they're the ones that put in all the hard work. Hardy drills it to the alley. Saunders on the run. It's off his glove. Pilar's there to back him up, and J.J. Hardy will get to second base. Saunders had to dive for it. Looked like he got a piece of it, but it went past him to the warning track, and Pilar backs it up. It should be a double for J.J. Hardy. Yeah, it looked like Michael had a shot at catching the ball off of Hardy. It hung up there a long time. Pitch away from him, and J.J. can go that way. This ball slicing back to Michael, and he dives and. Doesn't come up with it. Just off of his glove for extra bases. And there's a close up look. You're just talking about some of the great shots that our cameramen have given us all year long. There's a good one. Yeah, you don't really understand what goes into seeing those replays, but there's a lot of people involved. Adam Jones shows bunt and pulls the bat back. Let's we'll start with our RF tech equipment operator as Jeff. But Nello and he is involved with the RF cameras a runner that serves us very well all year long we can sure we have everything we need up in the booth Madison McNeil Greg Ottoman is the Fox box operator and they're all part of this technical crew that works so well together Eli Kiriopoulos is the cue ball operator and Eli is on top of things for us. You know what the cue ball is? Everybody at home, there it is. That's the cue the ball. The cue ball. That, that's the John Gibbons camera right there. That's the one that gets right into that home dugout. Let well, me see the uh, bench there. There's Gibby, and that's from the cue ball camera. And that's uh, Eli. Let's pan down to the bench there, Eli, and see what's going on the rest of the way. That's the. Camera operator, and that's a remote camera, obviously, and he's always giving us those great shots of the celebrations when the Blue Jays hit the home runs. You know, shot I like with that one is right down the first base line. Gives you those fair or foul, those close plays at first base. Jones hits this one down the right field line, and that's going to slice out of play. Well, let, let's take a look at that look. look at, isn't that a pretty shot? Right down the first base line. So when the batter's hitting, if he slices a ball down there, we get those great replays from the cue ball. Shane Sumner is the TVA. Kevin Schnur, of course, he's the guy that helps put up all those great fonts. He's the duet operator. Kind of shown thought about going to third, but goes to the back to retire. Jones as Hardy goes to third. Yes, yep. Kevin. Snurzy. He sits in the truck and does great work and communicates with the booth when something comes up and we need to show you a font, a title of something, as batting average, what they do with runners in scoring position. John Sue Kim with the infield drawn in. Nice play by Martin. John Gibbons was talking about that today about uh, the Baltimore Orioles last night got a couple of runners on and Liriano was going for strikeouts and was bouncing that slider in that inning. 
it must have been three, four, even five times that Russell was able to block balls and keep those runners on base and they didn't score. That is something that you just don't see a lot of or, or hear about, but it's so important. Uh, it gives the pitcher tremendous confidence to throw his best slider without the worry of the ball getting past the catcher. Ball on a strike to Kim. Kim hit a breaking ball that was on the inner half. He hit it into left field. And oftentimes when you have an inside out hitter like Kim he can hit the ball inside to left field better than he hit the ball outside to left field. They like the ball closer to him. He hit the home run that was closer to him. He's able to just drop the barrel on it. That's why I think they have to pitch away. And they're trying to keep everything away. Manny Machado is on deck. Machado is 0 for 9 in the series. Always dangerous. Missed with that cutter inside. It's the first walk issued by Stroman. That might not be a bad walk. Sets up a double play. And the way that Marcus can throw ground balls, he's got the he's the best in the major leagues at inducing ground balls. So you walk the tough left-hander. Now you got to deal with Manny Machado. Yeah, but one pitch and you put it on a good spot and he hits a ground ball, you can get out of this inning. Manny Machado, we mentioned he's 0 for 9 in this series. So out to right field in the first. The infield can play a little bit deeper in this situation because neither Kim nor Machado run particularly well. So you can give yourself a little more range by playing deeper. Anticipating a hard hit ball you can see the middle all the way back to the outfield grass normally they're halfway on that dirt closer to second base. Fly ball into center that's going to score a run. Hardy tagging it third. Kim tagging it first and here comes Hardy. For the first run of the ball game, Manny Machado, his 95th RBI of the season on the sack fly, and Baltimore takes the lead. Manufactured leadoff double, and I thought Adam Jones at bat, even with two strikes, he was trying to go the other way to advance that runner from oh second to third to set up the RBI for Machado. Mark Trumbo. That's good fundamental hitting right there. You're not always going to hit home runs. Stroman got a piece of it, knocked it down, slowed it down as Trumbull went after the first pitch for a second time tonight. He grounds up to end the inning, but Baltimore on the sack fly by Manny Machado has taken a one nothing lead.
like Mike from Winnipeg. Share your cheers and celebrate Canada's team. Visit RogersCelebrates.com. Thank you very much, Hazel. The roof is closed. The weather has been raining all afternoon here in Toronto. Omalu Menace has a 1 0 lead. As the Orioles scored on a sack fly. Number nine hitter is Devin Travis tonight back in the lineup after missing a couple of games. They had to do something interesting with Devin today. They put him in the starting lineup and they batted him ninth before batting practice. So he had to go out and take batting practice to see if his shoulder was going to be able to make it through batting practice and if so they're going to keep him in the lineup. If not they were going to scratch him and that's why he was hitting ninth in case they had to scratch him. His replacement would have hit down in the order. And Carrera has been doing such a good job hitting in the leadoff spot that you couldn't go wrong putting him there in the top of the order. Devin re-aggravated that left shoulder in that melee with the Yankees. Yeah, I think I said it was Sunday. It was actually Monday night against the Yankees. Travis. Goes after it, and puts it into the seats two and two. Of course, Devin dealt with that shoulder problem last year after May got hit on a line drive in by a line drive in Cleveland, and dealt with the shoulder problems and eventually had off-season mm -hmm. surgery. Says it hurts him on those higher pitches, doesn't it? You can see him struggle a little bit to get the bat head to that high fastball. And now with two strikes, of course, you don't have the luxury of taking those borderline pitches that are up. The menace might have got the scouting report. <laughs> Keeping everything upstairs. Well, all you have to do is hit one of them. Hit it hard for a base hit, and it'll change on you. Full count. Look at all those pitches up away to Travis, and there's Carrera. He's already singled tonight. Good ball for the only pitch he managed threw down was a ball. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. Back to the top of the order. Ezekiel Carrera has five hits in this series. Single to left field his first time up. Runs it up the first baseline. It's a beauty. And then it shovels quickly in time to get. Herrera, nice play by a menace as he went with his glove and his bare hand to make a good play. Had a play like that in last night's ball game, the first batter of the ball game for the Blue Jays. Carrera bunted up the first base line. Tillman shoveled the ball and threw it right into the breastbone of, of Davis, and he couldn't come up with it. This one is off to the side, and you can see Chris Davis go after it with two hands. As a first baseman, you're not real sure where this ball is going to be after they shovel it to you. He stayed right with that one, showed off some good hands. You saw that replay from that cue ball camera, of course, that's pitched in the dugout. So Carrera gets credited with a sacrifice punt. Devin Travis moves to second. And here comes the meat of the order Donaldson and Connachon. to Donaldson. Josh drew a walk off of Jimenez in the first inning. Walk number 108 for Donaldson this season. That 
play might have been initiated by the catcher as Jimenez was looking in at Matt Wieters and then he spun and fired second. There are so many different ways that you can run the pickoff play at second base. The catcher can call it. The second baseman can call it. You're right. That one looked like it might have come from Wieters. Ground ball. Carreras headed to third. Hardy goes to first. Donaldson's retired. Sure handed J.J. Hardy is going to do six airs. Carrera moves up on the ground out. Donaldson looks like he's walking back very gingerly as he made his way back to the dugout. We saw him last night showing some signs that he was a little gimpy once again. Really busted it down the first baseline a couple of times and then had to. Try to stretch things out. Sixty pitches now for the menace. That's right around his average for the season. Right around 20 pitches per inning. Ground ball. Machado has it at third. Cross the diamond in time. Blue Jays leave another base runner on. Orioles have a one nothing lead as we head to the fourth and here comes the ultimate cleanup crew brought to you by home hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate hard hitting and tough on grime cleaning products. live on your phone and tablet with the MLB.com at bat app. Customize at bat to feature your Blue Jays and stay up to the moment at any moment with scores news live game video highlights and much more. Download MLB.com at bat the number one app for live baseball. Thank you Hazel. Lots of people checking out their scores on their iPhones making sure they're catching up with everything. Not much going on around baseball except bad weather. Detroit was rained out this afternoon. Boston and the Yankees are playing, and of course, Boston won the AL East division title last night. There's a chopper up the first baseline. Edwin will go to the bag and beat Weeders there. One away. We wanted to continue to acknowledge our great TV crew here at Rogers Center that helps us throughout the course of the season. And now we'll go to the video operators. Joel Gorlou Dussault, who is one of the video operators that controls the cameras and helps us out. Kevin McIntyre alongside him and Chris Mitchell. All those guys doing a great job for us in that truck, making sure that everything is great pictures so you get a chance to take advantage of these high quality cameras. Chris Davis hits one into center field past Josh Donaldson. Well you were talking about video operators. They're going to show you how they get things done. That's a little backdoor cutter. 
from Marcus Stroman head down by Chris Davis he stays right with it. he knows there's only one infielder on the left side so if I just get it by him I've got a very good chance of getting a base hit. One out single for Chris Davis Jonathan scope the second baseman takes a strike in there. The VTR operators they sit in that truck and they look at all the VTR and make sure we have the replay so we can put together the great replays you see. Kevin McIntyre Dave Dubner and Jeff Inchley are all part of that crew and that front row in the truck they look at all the videotape make sure you got the pictures you want to see. So we want to acknowledge their fine work. We feel like we have the best crew in the business that understands baseball they love baseball. Of course that is Mike Sparks and Pat Donardis. They are the EVS operators. <laughs> Who are you for Andre Zeleny. <laughs> And some of them root for other teams, but we're not going to tell you who. <laughs> Did they get rained out tonight? <laughs> There's a line drive over Travis into center. Pilar will play it in the alley. Davis goes first to third as Scope gets a base hit. And here's what the EVS operators will put together to show you the replays. 0 2 to Jonathan Scope, and he elevates a fastball. Scope got a big hit in last night's game to help get that winning rally he started with a base hit the right field he gets a two strike base hit this time and that allows Davis to go first to third on the single to right field. It's a Baltimore Oriole team that just you know they come after you in waves. Good hitters. Good fundamental baseball and they've always got that home run. Michael Bourne fouls that one off his leg. Bourne was a strikeout victim his first time up. Well both of these teams are very similar offensively they can come at you at waves and neither one of them has been putting together these big innings lately. Ball bounces right off his right leg. Bottom to strike. Of course, runs have been tough to come by in this series. So both of these slugging teams are liable to use anything to produce a run. And Bourne can handle the map. Well, Baltimore is a station to station type of team on the bases. One base at a time. They don't have a lot of team speed. They don't take extra bases. They don't steal a lot of bases. But I'll tell you, they can slug with the best of them. Donaldson at third second for one and Travis had to stretch to get the force Donaldson made a high throw that was a tailor made double play ball but Donaldson made a high throw Travis did a heck of a job of catching the ball and getting his foot back on the bag to get and John runner is second Jonathan scopes going to stand out there to make sure that the out was made at second one hopper right to Donaldson and Travis does a one heck of a job of keeping that ball on the infield that looked like it was heading out into the outfield. But now they have taken a look at it one more time. High throw. Look at Devin Travis full tilt and then somehow gets down on that bag to get the out. What a great play by Travis to get that force. But Bourne. It's safe at first picks up an RBI on the fielder's choice and Baltimore has a two nothing lead. Now we mentioned this is a slugging team but they've manufactured two runs tonight. J.J. Hardy doubled and scored. Hardy scored the first run of the ball game in the third. 0 oh 2 on Hardy now. You might see Michael Bourne take off at first base. Bourne had a stolen base last night in the ninth inning. Not running. That was as a pinch runner after the single by scope. And he scored on the home run. Baltimore with a 2 0 lead. Now they got 
tied up on that inside pitch. One and two to J.J. Hardy. Sound Hardy to end the inning, but the Orioles get another run. They've taken a two nothing lead. Ahead, brought to you by WestJet. Well, there aren't too many games left, folks. After tonight, Blue Jays will get on a plane and go to Boston, take on the Red Sox Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. Make note of the Sunday afternoon time. The game time is at 3 p.m. Every game in the majors will start at 3 p.m. Eastern time because of the competitive balance issue. So everybody playing at the same time. Nobody has an advantage of knowing. Who may have won or lost earlier in the afternoon? I love that. What a great thing! They started that a couple of years ago, and everybody starts at the same time. And th these races are going to go down to that final day, so everybody's going to be score wa scoreboard watching that day all at the same time. You remember a few years ago, it happened with the batting races as well, where one hitter was out west waiting on the other hitter, and if the hitter back east got a couple of offers, that guy might pull himself out of the lineup. I like it. Everything starts at 3 Eastern time. And if you want it, you got to earn it. Uh, Estrada, Happ, and Sanchez scheduled for the Blue Jays in Boston over the weekend. Bautista can't believe he's called out. Angel Hernandez calls him out on that pitch up and away. A lot has changed in 40 years, but one thing hasn't. Honda, proud fan since 1977. Official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Russell Martin goes after the first pitch. The menace is Coming right after the Blue Jays, using a lot of fastballs early in the count. We had mentioned that he has thrown the ball very well of late. And he made those mechanical adjustments. When he gets that right hand behind his body, he used to hook that right wrist. And that created some inconsistency in his release point. Now he's focused on keeping it as straight as possible. Go straight down now, doesn't it? It's almost like he's touching the ground with the ball, pointing the ball right at the ground, and then that's it's just a timing issue to help him get the arm back up as he makes his way, as he starts to transfer his weight towards home plate. Martin reaches for it and pokes it up the first baseline. Davis steps on the bag. Two quick outs here in the fourth. 
He is gaining confidence too as this game has gone along. First inning, Blue Jays had the first two batters on against him and could not score. They had a leadoff walk in the third inning, sacrificed him over to second base, and hasn't they haven't been able to touch him. He looks like he's gaining confidence and throwing quality pitches. Well, Blue Jays have to figure out that some way to get something going offensively. They're in the fourth inning already, already down by two, and they've managed just one hit. This is a team that's supposed to hit, and the only hit they have gotten tonight, Ezekiel Carrera, the first batter of the game for the Blue Jays. Ball on a strike to Tulowitzki. Off the plate. The problem you have playing against the Orioles if you're behind when you get to the seventh, eighth, ninth inning, they've got a shutdown bullpen. Off the end of the bat, Menace will throw to first. Three up, three down. We'll go to the fifth. The Oils have a two nothing lead. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. October baseball in the comforts of a luxury suite. Single game postseason luxury suites are now on sale. Call 416-341-1635. Now you see the cameras panning around in these luxury suites. We want to acknowledge our fine camera crew here. Everybody contributing these great shots all season long. Mike Chappelle, our camera operator that gets those great shots. They're shifty down in the Cameron, well, he's the guy that runs out on the field and gets those great shots of the starting pitcher to start the game. Our RoboCam operator is Paul Ang, and Paul has the pleasure of using that RoboCam so video camera. At you. Yep, there he is, he's right, right there. At you. Good job, Paul. Adam Jones will step in the box here in the fifth inning. Jones has grounded out twice. Donaldson backhands it across the diamond in time. Jones is grounded out three times. Well, we want to talk about our camera operators that are the backbone of this television broadcast. Stephanie Dunthorne is our high third camera, and Stephanie's a great camera person, but also one of the finest makers of cinnamon rolls in the whole wide world. Stephanie, thank you very much for a great season. Martin Murphy is down there at third, and he's got the best perspective. He tells us what's going on before it happens, and he's a great baseball fan. And there's a terrific job. Brian Cooney is camped out near the Orioles dugout, the visiting dugout. He's right down there. He's got that chair. He gets a perfect <laughs> perspective down the left field line. Best seat in the house for Ryan. Nick Faust is the camera operator. 
And Fausti is out there in the great position to see everything from his perspective. That's his shot right there from center field. Grounder to Travis and Kumas retired. Todd Monroe has been with us a long time. He's a lot of fun to have on this crew. He's one of the great baseball fans on this TV crew. Todd's out there in tight center as well. He gives us shots that we can see all the catchers and the batter perspectives and from the top of the pitcher's shoulder. Mark Utley is there on the high right side and Mark does a terrific job as well. All these cameramen take a lot of pride in doing whatever they can and there's Terry. Terry. Terry McAlvin is with us in the booth all the time. He's just a level below us. He's shooting high home for us now. This ball is hit into center field. Manny Machado flies out to you. Kevin Pillar just five pitches for Strowman. He's doing his job. Now it's over to the hitters to figure out who will do a menace. Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all new 2017 Ridgeline. A lot of things have changed, but one thing hasn't. Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Proud fan since 1977. Beautiful shot of downtown Toronto. We are indoors tonight at Rogers Center. It's raining outside. This is Michael Saunders. He goes after the first pitch. We mentioned Saunders has four career home runs against Ubaldo Ramenes. He and Victor Martinez are the only hitters that have had four home runs against Ramenes. That's the most he's given up to one hitter. Blue Jays need some base runners. They got to get something going. They got to get this crowd into it. It's a big game. Baltimore wins this game. They tie the Blue Jays for the top wild card spot. In the American League. Seattle's also in the picture, and they will play later on tonight. They are home for the final four games of the season. They are home to play the Oakland A's to wrap up their season. Ariel Miranda will pitch tonight. Taiwan Walker, Iwakuma, and Hernandez for Seattle. Of course, the Blue Jays have their fate in their own hands. They win. Nobody else can catch them. That's what everybody keeps saying down in the clubhouse, down around the batting cage. We control our destiny. We just have to go out there and play good, solid baseball. Got to start hitting. Foul ball. Two and two. Scored two runs in yesterday's ball game. They got a sacrifice fly. In the first inning, and a sacrifice fly in the second inning, and then that was it. Didn't score the rest of the game, and ended up losing that one late. Another choo-choo pitch. Now it's a full count. After Sanders, it'll be Kevin Pilar.
Blue Jays have had just three base runners. Two of them the first two batters tonight. Line to Davis. He hit it hard but right at him. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. He battled him again to another 3 2 count. That's something that they've done regularly tonight against Jimenez. And then got something he liked, but Davis can't get it by him. Chris Davis reaches up for the first out. You know, we were talking about hitting, and everybody's assuming the Blue Jays are going to hit in 2016 like they did in 15. It's not going to happen. It's a two different different types of teams. Their run differential this year is plus 97. Last year it was over 200 this time of the year. So it, it's not the same. So you're going to have to play better defense. You're getting the great pitching. I think the only thing missing for the Blue Jays this month has been timely hitting. We haven't seen it hitting with runners in scoring position. We haven't seen it consistently. It's a high strike called on Pilar, and you can see top of the strike zone. And Bautista knows about that. He's had a couple of borderline pitches go against him tonight. In September, the Blue Jays averaging 3.88 runs per game. This is their 26th game of the month. As a team batting 240. But the alarming number is the fact they've only hit 23 home runs in the month. It's the 29th of September. Their lowest total prior to September was 29 home runs in April in 25 games. This September, they've hit 23 home runs in 25 games. So it's time to grind out at bats, take your walks, and you got to come up with some clutch hits if you're not hitting home runs. Another 3 2 count. Blue Jays would love to get the rain in October. And really mess up the parrots. <laughs> <laughs> Three two pitch to Pilar. That's going to reach the seats down the right side. Yeah I want to see it rain and I want to see more parrots coming out. Marcus Stroman once again with a terrific start. He's allowed two runs on five hits. Bouncing ball Machado coming in from third throws quickly in time. Two away. This copyrighted of telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Kevin Travis walked his first time up. Fifth inning. Travis questioning that call by Angel Hernandez. It's 0 and 2. With each pitch, it seems like Jimenez is getting more confident, feeling better about himself. He's thrown a lot of pitches here through five innings. He's closing in on 100. Ground ball, big hop for J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. Three up, three down. The Blue Jays go quietly in the fifth. We played five innings with all the women is shutting down the Blue Jays on just one hit.
broadcast has to do with the audio of course you get the great sound of the ballpark Sean Matthews Jones Mike Hayes Andrew Stokely all responsible for the great sound we get and they certainly control our levels in our headset and they help us an awful lot and you get to hear the crack of the bat and the roar of the crowd because that fine audio department in that technical truck. We move to the six it's getting late. Baltimore has a two nothing lead the Blue Jays have one hit. Mark Trumbo has hit the ball hard twice both times going after the first pitch this time they throw him a breaking throw him ball throw him a breaking ball because he's been on the two first pitch sinkers and fastballs. He's having trouble with the low pitches this year coming into this series under 200 on pitches that are down. But you elevate that ball and get it up around belt high, you can hit it a long way. Russell Martin taking a shot down around the knees. It's a ball on the strike. This is Mark Trumbo's first pennant race. He said, This is totally different for me. He said, I've always been on the other side watching those other teams play for a postseason. Now I've got a chance to do it myself. He's done his share. It's a major with 46 home runs. What a pickup. Pick him up from, was that Arizona he was with? Trade with Arizona. Tudowitzki makes the catch on the pop up. One of the real key aspects of our TV telecast is what they call the technical director. He's the man responsible for switching all the cameras. And that's Dan Brenner. He's there right next to our director, Troy Cleric. The director calls for all the shots, and he might be the most influential. And that gentleman on the left of your screen, that's Doug Walton. He's the producer. He's the brains behind this operation. He comes up with all the great ideas for our opens, and that ball is scalded. In the alley, Saunders is over and Weeders is retired. But that front row in that truck, the technical director Dan Brenner, the director Troy Clare, and the producer Doug Walton, they're responsible for the flow of the show. And in baseball, in my mind, more than any other sport, the director has to really understand the game because he has to anticipate where we're headed. Pitcher throws a pitch, the timing of the ball getting into the zone. Where is it going? Who's going to make a play? When everybody's going to run, director becomes probably the most important man in that truck. There's a base hit for Chris Davis over Devin Travis. He was playing in the shift, and Davis hits it over his head. He also has to understand what the heck we're talking about sometimes because we don't know what we're talking about sometimes. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> But he follows us beautifully after all these years. But we have another crew as well. Rick Briggs Jude substitutes in as a producer as well. He's always with us on the road and oftentimes here. Jeff Mather is also a director that will come and fill in from time to time. They do great work as well. We're blessed with a deep team. We have a deep roster and a lot of good players. And nobody goes on the DL. But it's a lot of fun. They make it fun to come to work every day. And we've said this time and time again. The best television we do all day long is the 30 minute meeting we have about 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Bring a camera in there. Then you'll really see a show. But we want to thank you all. And of course, Pat and I have been blessed to work a long time in television. And in my mind, this is the best crew in the game. And they do a great job, and everybody is always. Happy to come to work. And they're into the game. And they're into the Blue Jays. They're passionate and their baseball knowledge is, is up there. And every year, you know, we talk about the crew and, and we bring them down on the field. We see them on the field or we see them out. It takes a lot of people to put on a baseball game and they do a great job. Foul ball. The third base umpire, Lance Barksdale. First to call it foul. He came in behind Donaldson when Donaldson grabbed that the ball was in foul territory. One more time. This is the 
call of the home plate umpire until it gets by the bag and that's clearly by the bag and called foul by Lance Barksdale. Scope had an 0 2 hit. His last time up. On a high pitch Marcus trying to work it down now with two strikes. One and two Davis at first. Now it's two and two. The Orioles scored a run on a fielder's choice off the bat of Michael Bourne. Looked like it could have been an inning ending double play, but Donaldson threw high to second. Evan Travis had to leave his feet, but he was able to get the force out. Got one out, but not two. That would have ended the inning, and the Orioles wouldn't have scored that second run. But Bourne picks up the RBI his sixth of the season since coming over to the Orioles. Three two two outs Chris Davis at first he's going to be off on the pitch. There he goes. Broken bat. Ground ball to the whiskey throws on the run on the money. Hitting over. So the Orioles get another hit. Six hits but they strand the base runner when we come back the Blue Jays got to figure out how to get something going top of the order Carrera Donaldson and in kind of show. Well, Jamie, that was a setup. You and Pat had that all worked out before. I know you did. Pat's always got his eye on the Bengals. You know, I don't have it on there right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie, for that update. Thank you for thinking of me. Well, this is the top of the order. Blue Jays got to get something going. They have just one hit, and this is the man that collected that hit. Ezekiel Carrera had a single to left field in his first at bat. What a series Zeke has had. He has been a spark plug at the top of that. The batting order for the Blue Jays. He's had a single, a stolen base, and a sack bunt tonight. He was on base three times last night. He's just one of those guys that understands his role and he has the tool set to get things going over his last 13 games, hitting 400. It's a piece of that one. The Blue Jays certainly have the bats to get right back in this game. It's only a two run deficit. But they have been able to muster just one hit. They've only had three base runners through five innings.
That inside fastball ran back over the corner and Carreras called out. The menace wanted that pitch. Wieters called the curveball, then he called for a slider, and then he got to the fastball. This is the pitch Jimenez wanted to throw. Hey, only he knows how he feels and the comeback fastball. He's had some pretty good games against the Blue Jays in his career, and when he does, that's the pitch that's good for him. Inside to the lefties, outside to righties, that glove side fastball. First pitch change up to Donaldson. Two. Well, of course, the Orioles have the best closer in baseball, Zach Britton. He picked up his 47th save last night in the 3 2 win. He is perfect on the season 47 for 47. They also have the best overall bullpen in baseball in terms of earned run average. They have the lowest earned run average in the American League. Got to get something started. Donaldson takes strike three. The all new 2017 Ridgeline, our newest vehicle and their newest van. Honda, official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. has struck out two to start the bottom of the sixth. Glove side fastball again. So if he's standing on the mound, wherever his glove is, that's the side of the plate that he has been able to hit tonight. Pat, you mentioned him in this has had some good games against the Blue Jays. On the 11th of April, Last year, he threw seven innings of one hit ball. He's also had some bad games. Of course, we mentioned the one third of an inning outing here on the 12th of June. He lasted just one third of an inning, shortest outing of his career. So he's had both ends of the spectrum against the Blue Jays over his career. In fact, he's six and five in 15 starts prior to tonight. Is ERA? This year against the Blue Jays is over nine. I know part of that was that one third of an inning. That's why it's so high, but it's 15 earned runs in 14 innings. In back to back starts, he made the start on the 12th here and then started on the 17th at Camden Yards against the Blue Jays. And they touched him up for 10 earned runs in two and two thirds innings. So that's why that ERA is so elevated. Full count pitch to Encarnacion. He lays off, and that'll bring Bautista to the plate. Just not wanting to give in to Encarnacion, so Bautista will come to the plate, representing the tying run. He has gotten so many big hits over his career for the Blue Jays. We have mentioned his struggles against the menace. He is now three for 37. High and deep fly ball to center. Jones is going to get there. He's on the warning track and makes the catch. The menace leaves another base runner. We played six, and the Blue Jays trail Baltimore two to nothing.
what we do is the guys that put all the wires together that's called the engineering crew and Joey Chan and Jamie Baruki and Dave Schick and I can't even get my clock to work but they look at all those wires they have to put together and they do a terrific job of that every single day and we go down there and look at that maze and go I don't know how you do it but they do a terrific job of putting that all together for us and obviously our partner up here in the booth Scott Carson he's one of the best stats men in the business and I think Scott's been working with me since he was about 10 and he does a terrific <laughs> job and we always enjoy having Scotty up in the booth and he gives us all the great information and my partner Pat Tatler we have a ball doing this and we want to thank you for all the support that you give us all season long and it's a pleasure and we enjoy bringing it to you every single night. Thank you to the crew the home crew the away crew and thanks to all the fans who tune in every night Buck. I mean we get them from coast to coast talking to us and how they tell us that we're in their living room every night. So thank you fans. Thank you very much indeed and it's great to see you whenever we go on the road it's great to see you here at Rogers Center and it's been another great season and it's not over yet. We got a lot of baseball coming up. Michael Bourne fouls it back it's a ball and two strikes to Bourne. For Marcus Stroman he has continued that great stretch the Blue Jay starters have had 13 straight starts where they've allowed two or fewer earned runs and Stroman has continued that breaking ball he's been below. great they wanted that one Angel Hernandez pointing out to Marcus Stroman saying that's enough. But Marcus we talked about his last start seven innings one hit no earned runs against the Yankees he got a no decision who just just couldn't score many runs. Bourne has been dealing with that pitch inside and he found a couple of balls off his feet earlier in the ballgame and Angel Hernandez just a quick little chat with Stroman saying. You do the pitching and I'll do the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I just went out there and said, okay, I understand some close pitches, but let's just play some baseball. Yeah, he thought he had that one, and you can see it's off the plate outside. It was a breaking ball. And our pitch tracker looks like it was outside. 3 2 to Bourne. And there's the leadoff walk. That's just the second walk issued by Stroman. Comes with the leadoff man here in the seventh. I think where some of the frustration is is Blue Jay hitters thought a couple of those pitchers were in the same spot and they were called a strike. And then Marcus threw a ball that he thought was a strike and it was called off the plate. So, you know, in that situation, you know what you do? Throw a better pitch. That's what managers used to say and pitching coaches to guys when they would come in and complain about, well, I'm not getting the strike. Throw a better one. Barn got a terrific jump. Martin's throw not nearly in time as Michael Bourne got a running start at first. Picks up his second stolen base of the series. His second since joining the Orioles. There's the running start. First movement goes on Marcus Stroman to throw tails just a little bit. Still no tag is born is safe at second base. Now Russell's going to go out there and talk to Demarcus. You can see him. Is that ball inside? That's where you have to just forget about what has happened. Now you got to get this guy out here. You know J.J. Hardy's going to try and move that runner to third base. So how do you counteract that if you're a Stroman? He's liable to bunt him over there. I mean, he's such a pro, such a veteran. He's going to try and shoot the ball the other way. Maybe you throw a ball inside. <laughs> there you go. He squared the bunt. And he threw it inside. Well, that's what we are always taught to do. There's a catcher up and in. They square early, throw it up and in. That'll be a tough ball to bunt. And you're hopeful that the batter will jab at it and pop it up. Might get you an easy out. Squaring again. This is bunted up the first baseline. So you're right on the money about 
the Orioles, and they're like the Blue Jays, don't bunt very often, but they haven't been scoring many yeah. runs either. Yeah, and they're they're still hitting their fair share of home runs, two big ones last night to help them win the game. But Buck Showalter, he knows where he is in this ball game. He knows who's coming up for him, and he knows he's got that bullpen ready. Jimenez is probably done, so he wants to score another run. You score one, you got to score two to beat me with my bullpen. That's his thinking. Hardy squares again. It's outside. Three and one now. They might take it off here with Hardy's. Got a lot of power. You can get him a fastball possibly on this 3 1 pitch. You let him hit. He does hit and he pulls it to short. Tulowitzki, look at that throw. Chest high, right on the money. Tulowitzki running to his right, throwing across his body, right on the money. Nobody does it better than Tulowitzki. This guy comes to play every day and he is in every game. He is behind Michael Bourne just to keep him close. Quick first step and thrown on the run again with plenty on it across the diamond. That is so fun to watch. And so accurate too. Well that's the amazing thing that ball doesn't tail like most throws you see from the side they have a big tail on it not when Tulowitzki throws it. Back to the top of the order Adam Jones has grounded out three times tonight. This is high and deep to center Pilar is back. On the track at the wall, he makes the catch, and Bourne had tagged and left too early. Oh, what a good job by Pilar. He stayed with him, timed his leap perfectly, and takes one away from Adam Jones. When it left the bat, it looked like it was going to be out of the ballpark. But Kevin Pilar never gave up on it. Ball hit hard by Jones to center field and then Bourne messes things up by not tagging. As Pilar picks that one off the wall in center field never gave up on that ball and hauled it in right at the wall. You saw Bourne. He knows he made a mistake. Pilar with a perfectly timed jump goes high up on the wall pull it down. Bourne didn't tag. And that's a play where you have to tag because if the ball drops fair, he can score from second easily. Ground ball, base hit. Saunders is charging hard. Here comes Bourne around third, and he's going to score standing up. Young Soo Kim with a two out single to right. His second hit of the night, a big RBI for Kim. Single handily has. Been a thorn in the side of the Blue Jays the last two nights. Everybody knows about the home run last night to put him ahead, probably the biggest hit in the Orioles' season. And now comes up clutch right here with two outs. After walking stolen base, two outs, he comes through. First pitch hitting to right field. For Kim, that's just his 22nd RBI of the season. But the two run home run last night and now the insurance RBI here in the seventh and that's going to get the Blue Jays bullpen stirring around Manny Machado Brad Brock big right hander loosening up. For the Orioles. Breaking ball in the dirt. Stroman has allowed three earned runs, so that snaps that streak the Blue Jays starters have had 13 straight games in which they had held opponents to two earned runs or less. That will end tonight. Still pretty good work. Seventh inning, if you can get Machado here, seven full innings. And just three earned runs. Manny Machado picked up a sack fly in the third. He drove in the first oil run of the night.
Strowman wanted that one, and you can see he's restrained himself after having a conversation with Angel Hernandez. Blue Jays have been called out on close pitches tonight as well, and I think that's why Strowman says, "Hey, man, we need him too." Yeah, you gather yourself right here. It's three and two, two outs. Kim's going to be taken off. Machado, very dangerous hitter. Foul down the third baseline. Kim will go back to first. Baltimore three runs on seven hits. The Blue Jays no runs on just one hit. Think about Manny Machado why he is so tough he's got plate coverage he can hit any pitch but he's got plate coverage on pitches away from him he's a big guy and he opens his stance up but he can handle the outside part of the plate he's one of the best top 10 hitters in the American League as you see Tapera and Luke start to warm up but you try to get a ball away from him he can shoot it the other way pulls that one foul again. He's in the top 10 of being able to hit that outside pitch the other way, hitting over 300. When you see him at the plate, he's got an open stance. And you say, well, I can get that outside part of the plate against him, but he can cover it. Young Su Kim, big RBI. Base hit with two outs. He'll be off on this pitch. There he goes. Another foul back. Machado and Strowman banging heads here in the seventh. Machado had the sack fly in the third, but Blue Jays have held him to an 0 for 10 in this series. Hit a ball hard his last time up to center field. Sacrifice fly went to center field his last time up hit a ball hard to Pilar in center. Stroman gets the call there. That ends the inning. But the Orioles get a big insurance run. Blue Jays trail three to nothing. It'll be Russell Martin leading things off, then Troy Tulowitzki and Michael Saunders. Given the Orioles a terrific effort tonight, and it's not a surprise given his splits for the season. At the break, his ERA was over seven, but Patty's really turned it around. He it's has a mid-season All-Star game. He has his ERA just over three opponents batting average under 200. He's cut his walks down. He's throwing quality pitches, and we could tell in this game he was getting stronger and stronger and more confident since that All-Star break. He beat Tampa. He beat Detroit. He lost last game when he didn't give up an earned run pitching into the sixth inning. So Buck Showalter is feeling pretty confident with him. So he runs him back out here even though he's got 112 pitches here. 
in the seventh. Well, this would be his last start in the regular season, so empty the tank. Chopper. Ball though off the mound throws high, but in time to get Russell Martin. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. And they are playing in St. Louis and it's been unbelievable how poorly they have played at home this season. The Cardinals going into play tonight 34 and 43 at home. Boy there's another little tapper back to the mound and then it's bobbles it recovers not in time. Tulowitzki legged it out. The Orioles probably going to have a look at this one. And Buck Showalter asking the umpire to hold on a minute. A little yeah. squiver that Rubando Jimenez couldn't handle. You, you can't take anything for granted in baseball. Not when you've got four games left and you got a game lead on this team. You run everything out. I have seen plays like this start rallies where it looked like an easy out right back to the pitcher. He bobbles it. Throws to first base. He's called safe one more time. Davis reaches. You can't really tell where the you couldn't see his where, foot. Where this foot is. Ted Barrett is the crew chief. He made the call, so the next umpire in seniority, Angel Hernandez, will join him on the headset. They communicate with New York. Here's another look at it. This one might be able to show it. Chris Davis cannot reach. For that time, it looked like he was safe. This replay review is powered by Samsung. Of course, the call on the field is safe. Kulowitzki would reach on the air by the pitcher. And again, another look. And that one, again, inconclusive. It has to be definitive that the call on the field is incorrect. And this doesn't really give you a clear cut view. And now they're going to call Kulowitzki out. Ted Barrett. The word from New York. They throw beat Tulowitzki to the bag, so it'll be another one three ground down. And that's going to be it as Buck Showalter has just called for the left hander. Michael Saunders is the scheduled batter with two outs here in the seventh. And what an effort by Waldo Amenis. So Amenis will leave. He leaves with a Three nothing lead. Donnie Hart coming into the ball game.
Davis has really turned his season around in the second half and he was nearly unhittable against the Blue Jays tonight. He gave up a leadoff hit to Ezekiel Carrera to lead off the ball game. That was the last hit the Blue Jays got against Yamaldo Jimenez. No earned runs. That's two starts in a row for Jimenez where he did not give up an earned run. He pitched into the seventh inning at five strikeouts. There wasn't a lot of balls hit very hard against him tonight. So after he gets the first two batters, the right-handed batters, lefty schedule. So here comes Donnie Hart probably for just one batter. The lefty has been money against left-handed batters. Unfortunately, he doesn't get a lefty. He gets a pinch hitter. Melvin Upton Jr. comes on to bat for Michael Saunders. Upton for the season batting 238 as a pinch hitter for the Blue Jays. One for five with an RBI. Two and zero. Oh. Upton against lefties this season, batting 278. You have to make this move. Hart was so good against lefties, not so good against righties. So John Gibbons goes to his bullpen, or excuse me, his bench, and says, "I got to get something started." Buck Showalter, John Russell on his left, the bench coach. Broken back grounder to the hole. Hardy long throw. Upton is out at first. J.J. Hardy very accurate throw. Got a nice dig over at first from Chris Davis. The Blue Jays are done in the seventh. Ubaldo Menace in line for the win. K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. Melvin Upton Jr. pinch hit for Michael Saunders. He takes over defensively in left field with that the starter in left. Ezekiel Carrera moves to right, takes over in Saunders' spot in right field. Marcus Stroman back out for the eight. He's been good. Seven innings, seven hits, three earned runs, and he's kept his ball club within striking distance. They just haven't been able to get anything going against the Orioles pitchers. Ubaldo and Menace, six and two thirds of one hit ball. Donnie Hart closed out the seventh. Trumbull, Weeders, and Davis for the Orioles. Barrett calling Trumbull for the swing. 
on the appeal down the first. Two balls and a strike. He's ahead in the count. He starts hunting certain pitches, hunting fastballs. He's a 350 hitter when he's ahead in the count. And he's got another hit when he's in head. Trumbo hustling around first. Here's the throw to second, and Trumbo with a hustle double as he never broke stride. As soon as he made contact, he was thinking about getting to second base. Well, what an effort by Mark Trumbo. That's where he made that double coming out of the box. Fastball. He's thinking right now. I got a shot here to get to second base. A leadoff double. A ball punched through the middle of the nine. And there's no chance to get him. Pilar is playing in right center field. Kevin picks the ball up. Tries to get the ball back as quick as possible. And it's another leadoff double. Ground ball, base hit. That's going to score Trumbo. He's coming around third. Matt Wieters picks up the RBI. A double and a single here in the eighth. And the Oilers have taken a 4 nothing lead. It's a team that just keeps coming after you. They've got a team, a roster of veterans. Trumbo hustles his way into scoring position and he's going to be cashed immediately by Matt Wieters. And those first two batters reach on the eighth and that spells the end of the night for Marcus Stroman. Matt Wieters picks up his 62nd RBI. Stroman gives up a double and a single here in the eighth. Aaron Luke will come in to face Chris Davis. Ball game for the Blue Jays is Aaron Loop making his 20th appearance of the season. And Loop has been back and forth between AAA and the big leagues a couple of different times this year. Aaron last worked the 21st. That was that game at Seattle. Just a third of an inning. He had a couple of walks against the Mariners. They might be in here for just one batter. Blue Jays need some outs right here. And he's up against Chris Davis. Davis checks his swing on the first pitch. Four nothing Baltimore. They have nine hits. The Blue Jays have no runs on just one hit. Ball on the strike. Marcus Stroman threw the ball well tonight. Up with going seven innings plus two batters. Mark Trumbull had a couple of hits, including that hustle double to start the eighth inning. Came around to score on a base hit by Matt Wieters. Trumbull playing in his first pennant race in his seventh year in the majors. 
That's a pretty good pitch. Russell Martin wanted that and said, hey man, that's been a strike all night. Uh, instead of two and two, it's three and one now. So Aaron's got to be very careful. All right here to Davis. It's that fastball by him. Davis has hit well against Loop in the past. He's five for 11 against the Blue Jays lefty with a homer. Jonathan Scope waits on deck. Got it. Good pitch from Luke. Fastball down and away for a strike. One away. Swing for the fences and save during the DIY expert sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Aaron Luke gets his man the strike out of Chris Davis. Jonathan Scope is the scheduled batter. Ryan Chapera will come on to face him with a man at first and one out. Official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays, proud fan since 1977. Adam Jones, a great center fielder for the Baltimore Orioles, says we're playing with house money right here. We got nothing to lose. Just go out there and play as hard as we can, and good things are going to happen. Mark Trumbo shows you when you play hard, good things are going to happen. As he turns that single into a double, he's also scored a run already because of that hustle double, and that's our drive of the game. That's how you hustle and you score runs by playing the game the right way. Now here's a big guy that doesn't run really well and he saw that that was going to be a tough play for the center fielder. So Trumbo gets himself in the scoring position and sets up an RBI for Matt Wieters. So Loop struck out Davis. Now Tapera will come in with one out to face Jonathan Scope. Good numbers up and down for Ryan Tapera. He's been up and down. This year between Triple A and the major leagues, he's stranded 11 of the 13 base runners that he has inherited this year. Tapera worked twice in the Seattle series. First time he's pitched on the homestand. He's always looking to hit. Jonathan Scope is ready to swing that bat whenever he steps into that batter's box. He's got the lowest walk percentage in all of baseball. Tough to issue free passes to him. Tapera strikes him out on three pitches. So Loop and Tapera come out of the bullpen and get a couple of strikeouts. Late break on that slider. You can see Ryan get on top of it. Throws it in a good spot to pick up the strikeout. Michael Bourne picked up an RBI on a fielder's choice in the fourth. The Orioles scored their first run on a sack fly in the third. Manny Machado delivering. Then Bourne. 
And a ground ball looked like it was going to be a double play ball to close out the inning. But he reached. All the Blue Jays could get was the force out. It was a high throw from Donaldson, and Travis did a heck of a job of getting the force in second. And then Young Soo Kim drove in the third run with an RBI single to right, and Weeters has cashed in the fourth run here in the eighth. One and two. Marcus Stroman pitched into the eighth. He'd held the Orioles to three runs through seven, gives up a fourth run here in the eighth. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Got it. For Luke and Tepera come out of the bullpen, they strike out three. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. The Blue Jays are down by four. Now, time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Here's the Blue Jays a good start tonight. He pitches into the eighth through 99 pitches. He always got nine hits, four earned runs. He walked a couple and struck out three. And tonight, unfortunately, that great stretch of games by the Blue Jays starters has come to an end. They had 13 consecutive starts where they've allowed two earned runs or less over that 13 game stretch. I thought his pitching line looked worse than the way he pitched. I thought he pitched some made some pretty good pitches tonight. Unfortunately, he's on the wrong end right now. And the Baltimore Orioles have the best ERA for a team ERA for a, a relief court. And one of the reasons why is Brad Brock. He leads the club in appearances. This is his 70th appearance of the season. He's got 24 holds and he's six in the American League in strikeouts with 88. Very tough on right handed batters. Kevin Pillar goes after the first pitch. This ball's going to get down. A leadoff single for Pillar. All you need is a start sometimes. Slider first pitch, and Pillar stays on top of it. 
slices it in the right field in front of Adam Jones and a good start for the Jays here in the eighth inning. For Pilar, that's his third hit against Brad Brock in 12 at bats, but it's a start. Kevin Travis. Forty seven thousand seven ninety one here at Rogers Center. Another terrific crowd and the fans have backed this ball from 100 percent and they're trying to push the Blue Jays over the finish line here tonight. They got the rally caps on. They're getting into it here in the eighth inning after that leadoff single trying to help the Blue Jays. With a come from behind. Win. Travis is called out on strikes. One away. Told you he is tough on righties. Big fastball, slider, changeup. That time Brad Brock got Devin Travis looking for his off speed pitch and threw a fastball right by him. 24 holds, now 89 strikeouts for Brock. Ezekiel Carrera has singled, had a sack bunt, and called out on strikes. He is one for two tonight. Getting in the leadoff spot. Another great crowd, and you see the season attendance 3.392099. That is the fifth largest season attendance in franchise history. All been year. Consistent all year all long. Year they have come out to cheer the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are the only team in the American League to average over 40,000 fans a game. And you fans deserve a lot of credit. You've been there game in and game out. Yeah, we've seen them at home. We've also seen big crowds on the road trying to get the Blue Jays some runs here in the eighth. Bouncing ball up the middle. Hardy will go to the bag and go to first for the double play. Brad Brock gives up a single, but then gets the double play to get out of the eighth. We'll go to the ninth. The Orioles have a 4 nothing lead. Was an office said, you know what? It'd be a good idea if we had two wild card berths in each league, and it's turned out to be a heck of an idea. Here's where we stand in the American League wild card race as we speak. The Blue Jays have a game lead over the Orioles. The Tigers are a game back 
of the Orioles. They are out of the picture as we speak and they were rained out today. Seattle is two back. They will play Oakland in a four game series. That'll start later on tonight. And Houston, they've just about fallen out of the picture at three and a half back. Probably one more loss or another win by one of those teams ahead of them will eliminate them. But Bud Selig, his legacy might be all the great stadiums and the internet and social media. Uh, his legacy as the commissioner of baseball in his time, I think it's the advent of the wild card and the extra playoff round making it exciting baseball in the month of September. Well, another thing obviously that you have to consider when you talk about Commissioner Seelig's run as the commissioner was the attack on PEDs and the way he went after Good that. point. Yes sir. J.J. Hardy the shortstop. It's this one into center Kevin Pillar will get there. Now for a preview of what's coming next on Sportsnet Central. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osmak. Well, Ivanka, I can tell you one thing. Pat Tabler is going to be checking in to see what the Bengals did. As soon as this one's over. Absolutely. One out. We're in the top of the ninth. Adam Jones, the leadoff man. He's gone over four tonight. The Yankees and the Orioles will play at Yankee Stadium over the weekend. And the Orioles have Giovanni Gallardo, Wade Miley, and Kevin Gosman lined up in their three game series. Broken Matt grounder to short to Lewitsky in time. The Yankees will counter the Orioles with Michael Pineda on Friday. They've not yet named a starter for Saturday. Luis Sessa will pitch the final game of the season for the Yankees. In the meantime, the Blue Jays will go to Boston. Marco Estrada, Jay Happ, and Aaron Sanchez are the starters for the Blue Jays. And as we speak, the rotation for Boston is Rick Porcello, Eduardo Rodriguez, and David Price. And you would that? think they're going to make some adjustments yeah. with that. Unless they start Porcello and throw him three innings. Yeah, I can see them doing that. David yeah. Price is not going to pitch on Sunday. No, they're going to wait back and hold him back and save him for the playoffs. Game one of the ALDS. If this game holds the way it is, those games become very important for the Blue Jays. There was some talk of them maybe shuffling their rotation a little bit the last couple of days if they needed to. Right now, they're going to need to win all of those games. To Perra. Okay. Good inning. Goes an inning in two thirds. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays are down by four. Jose Bautista may be playing in his final home game for the Blue Jays. Same for Edwin Encarnacion. They're both free agents after this season.
regular season for the Blue Jays and Edwin Encarnacion and Jose Bautista are both free agent at the end of this season. Theoretically this could be their last home game of the season and obviously we hope it's not. But there is possibility they will bring them back one possibly both of them. And they have had tremendous careers here playing for the Blue Jays. Edwin has played eight years with the Blue Jays. He said 239 home runs in a Blue Jay uniform. He and Bautista have been one of the most potent one two power combos in all of baseball all over the leaderboard of the Blue Jay career franchise records. They're both free agents. They both have earned the right to look around. That's that's what the system is set up for. Bautista has played nine years for the Blue Jays. He's hit 264 home runs in a Blue Jay uniform. And Jose has been a two time home run champ. 54 home runs in 2010, 43 in 2011. He's been a six time All Star, won the Silver Slugger Award three times. And like you say, he's on the leaderboard in franchise offensive categories all across the board. The Blue Jays have had some great sluggers in their career and their franchise history. These two are two of the best. I mean you can go back to Barfield and Bell great sluggers in those 80s teams Joe Carter Dave Winfield the great sluggers of the 90s team Sean Green Carlos Delgado Vernon Wells iconic Blue Jay franchise types of players these guys are right there with them. Yeah they certainly are. And they've been tremendous assets for the franchise. And they are iconic baseball players in the eyes of the fans. Josh Donaldson fouls it off. Brad Brock still in this ball game. He came in and gave up a leadoff single to Kevin Pilar, but then struck out Travis and got Carrera to bounce into an inning ending double play. Well, he gets the three best that the Blue Jays have to offer. Dawson called out on strikes. First baseman, number 10, Edwin Encarnacion. So Edwin, he has his followers for sure. He's 0 for 2 tonight. He walked in the sixth. Breaking ball. The you know, Blue Jays will win the season series 10 to 9, but the Orioles may have won the biggest series of the season here in Toronto. Gather some momentum as they head over to New York. Blue Jays winning the series, so if there is a tie, they win the tiebreaker with the Orioles. They also have the tiebreaker with the Tigers. Yankees and Red Sox really no impact at all. Red Sox clinched the division with the Blue Jays loss last night. Two and one to Encarnacion. That's going to be a base hit down the left field line. He's headed for second. Nolan Rymel the left fielder in defensively as Encarnacion gets a double with one out his 34th double of the season. And keeps hopes alive. Looks the fans standing. Jose Bautista. 34th double of the season. Bautista 0 for 3. He's known as Joey Bats here in Toronto.
He committed a bop, and now uh, Angel Hernandez is explaining to Brad Brock what he did, and Brock can't believe he called him. Buck Showell will just <laughs> stand back. Wieters asks for time. He'll go out and try to help Brock yeah. gather his thoughts. And say, look, that run doesn't mean anything. We've got a four-run lead. Let's worry about the, the guy in the batter's box. You tell me if he flinches. Maybe yeah, he his did. Leg moved yeah, a little his bit. Leg, his left leg. Watch his left leg. There it is. Yeah. And Ranger Hernandez called it. So now in Carlos at third base. Oh, and two to Bautista. Bautista strikes out two down. Brock with three strikeouts. Strike one to Russell Martin. Ground ball. Hardy at short. Takes his time. That's the ball game. Brad Brock, two innings of solid relief. He strikes out three. And the Orioles win the series two games to one and have tied the Blue Jays for the top spot in the wild card race. This all started yesterday with that dramatic home run by Young Soo Kim in the ninth inning off of Osuna. That gave them a little breathing room, gave them a little bit of confidence for today. Yubato Jimenez took it from there. He gave up just the one hit to the Blue Jays and the rest of the Oriole bullpen shut down the Blue Jays. They win this one four to one. They win the series. And now if they have tied the Jays. Jays now have to go out on the road in Boston and they have to I think at minimum take that series from the Red Sox. The Blue Jays are shut out for the eighth time this season and it comes at a bad time. Blue Jays and Orioles tied atop the wild card race. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Here's Sportsnet Central. Canada Ivanka.